Hey Math 31, so I got a question on how on earth I did number 29, and this is a process called completing the square. So when it comes to these quadratics, I just want to, I'm going to write this over on the side. There are three methods that we picked up for solving quadratics. Um, the first thing you can do is you can factor, or you can try factoring, I should say. The second thing you can do is you can use the quadratic formula. And the third thing you can do is complete the square. So those are the three methods. And for me personally, I would say that my favorite method, if I can factor, I always try to factor. That's probably the thing I do first. But this doesn't always work. So there are some quadratics out there that are prime and can't be factored. So if factoring doesn't work, the next thing I tend to go to, oops, let me get a different color. Oops, that's the same color. <laughs> I will go to the quadratic formula. That's probably my, my, not even probably, that's my next one. The one I try and avoid um, if I can is this one. This is probably my least favorite method. All right, I usually only use completing the square when I'm um, looking at conic sections. And when I say conic sections, that's hyperbolas, ellipses, circles, things like that. So this, this third option is the one I, I hold off on, all right, unless I have to do it. Um, I want to show you that these two methods, the quadratic formula and completing the square, they always work. Oops, that's a little thick, but always work. All right, I don't care what quadratic you give me, those two methods will always work. Um, factoring, while I feel it's the fastest, it doesn't always work. Like I said, sometimes you have quadratics that are prime. Okay, so with that, how on earth, oops, let me erase this for a moment. How on earth do you complete the square, especially when you don't have a lead coefficient of one? So the thing you want to do when you complete the square is you want to get all of your variables on one side. So you see here I have 6z squared minus c. And then the next thing you want is you want your constant over there on the right. And that, that will always be the case. All right, so I've got my variables on the left, and I've got my constant here on the right. Now for completing the square to work, this lead coefficient in front of your quadratic term has to be 1. And right now, it's not 1. Right now, I have a 6, so that's a problem. So that's why you see, in going from steps 2 to 3, I factored out a 6. So if I factor out a 6 from 6z six squared, I have 6 times, again, 1z squared. right? And then to factor out a 6 from negative z, I have to divide by 6 over here. And if you're struggling with that, let me erase all this for just a moment. And I want us to think about what would happen if I redistributed the 6. 6 times z squared would get us to 6z squared. And then 6 times negative z over 6 would get us back to negative z. So I, I have factored correctly. All right, so let me erase this. And I'm, I'm going to rewrite this over here with just a little bit of space so that you can see what's happening. So I have 6 times z squared minus z over 6. All right, and I'm going to leave some space, and that's going to be equal to 2. Now, if I wanted to, I could have written, rewritten this as six, six times the quantity of z squared minus one-sixth z, again, some space, equaling two. And I'll, I'll talk about the two in a little moment. All right, so how completing the square works is you're going to hear me say you need to take half of the linear term, or really half of the coefficient of the linear term, and square it. So half of the coefficient of the linear term, and then square it. All right, so what does that look like here? Well, here is the coefficient in front of my linear term. So if I want to play this out, I want to take half of the linear term, and then I want to square it. So this is a little fraction work I'm going to do. So I'm going to do what's in the parentheses first. I'm going to do negative 1 6 divided by 2. Oops, excuse me, and drop the 2. Divided by 2, and I'm going to square it. All right, well, that would be negative 1 6, and dividing by 2 is like multiplying by 1 half. All right, I'm going to square that in a moment. Now when you multiply fractions, you multiply numerators, multiply denominators. So negative 1 times 1 is negative 1 on the numerator. 6 times 2 is 12 on the denominator. I'm going to square it, and I'm going to get 1 over 144. 
All right, so when I say put some space here, and I, I might not have given myself enough space, what we do is we add 144, excuse me, 1 over 144, and we subtract 1 over 144. Because when you add 1 over 44 and then you subtract 1 over 44, this is equal to 0, so I'm not changing the original problem. And that, that's key. So we're not changing the original problem, and that's why you saw me adding this shenanigans here. All right. So once we get there, let me erase that last thing I just circled. All right, once we get there, really all we want is we just want to cut the parentheses off here. All right, I want to cut the parentheses off here, but I, I can't ignore this term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute the 6 to that term, and that's why you see this minus 6 over 144, because again, if I just do a little scribbles down here, 6 times 1 over 144, sure enough, is 6 over 144. Okay, so let me let me erase some of my squiggles because I got a bunch here. All right. Now the thing that happens at this point is this trinomial, and I say trinomial because there's one, two, three terms. That trinomial is now a perfect square, and the perfect square. Oops, excuse me. I'm going to erase this because again it's going to get crowded. The perfect square that it becomes is your variable and then half of the linear term, right? Oops, and actually let me, let me extend that just a bit and do half of the linear term squared. Well, not squared, excuse me, I, just half of the linear term. So when I got this negative 1 12th over here, you see it dropping here. And again, if this isn't gelling with you, you can always work it backwards just a little bit. So let me scooch up here, and I want to show you how this really is equal to this. So if I have a little space here, let's take z minus 1 12th and square it. All right, that would be z minus 1 12th times z minus 1 12th. All right, so first, if I FOIL this, that would give me z squared. Outer would give me, um, what do we have? Negative 1 12th z. Inner would give me negative 1 12th z. And last would give me plus 1 over 144. And then if we combine these two like terms, let me show you, those two are like terms, all right? Then I'm gonna have z squared minus, well, 2 twelfths is 1 6, so I have 1 6 z plus 1 over 144, right? And that was what I was initially starting with. So that's why we have this 6 minus, or 6 times z minus 1 12 squared. Now, I've got a lot of scribbles here, so I'm going to erase all this just so it's clearing up, and you see my, my notes on the side. So I've got this 6 times this perfect square here, and what I want to do is I want to move this over now. All right, so when I add 6 over 144 to both sides, the right side of the equation simplifies to 294 divided by 144. Okay, so let me keep on going here. I want to isolate now this squared term. If I want to isolate that squared term, I need to divide the 6 out. That's why you see me saying divide both sides by 6. When you work 294 to, divided by 144 and then again divided by 6 over here, you're going to get 49 over 144. Okay. All right. And then we just keep on going. Now it's time for me to take the square root. Because if I ever want to undo a square, I'm going to square root both sides. But keep in mind, whenever you square root a variable like this, the plus or minus shows up. And that tends to be a little problematic. Sometimes we forget that. But the square root and the squaring cancel out. The square root of 49 over 144, those are perfect squares. So you see it simplifying to 7 twelfths. And then the last thing I need to do is add 1 twelfth to both sides. So if we want to look at our answer, it says right here, ooh, wonder what that was, turned into a triangle. That's fancy. Let me erase that. So our answer says z is equal to 1 12th plus or minus 7 twelfths. So that means z could equal 1 12th plus 7 twelfths, or z could equal 1 12th minus 7 twelfths. And when you have fractions with common denominators, you add their numerators. So in this case, 1 plus 7 is 8 over 12. In this case, I need to subtract the denominators. 1 minus 7 is negative 6 over 12. This simplifies. Ooh, why is my pen not working? There we go. This simplifies to 2 thirds, and this simplifies to negative 1 half. All right, so that's definitely an intense problem, but that's 
how you complete a square. Oops, sorry about that. Let me get my keyboard down. That is how you complete a square when your lead coefficient is not one. So the biggest problem here was this lead coefficient not being one. So we had to factor out the six, then use the method of completing the square, then solve for the square root. So I think you can see why completing the square is not my favorite um, method. I would much sooner um, have tried to factor this, and it actually would have factored, and if not, I would have used the quadratic formula, but I do want you to see this option. All right, well, that's, that's number 29. Thanks so much for asking that question, and I'll see you in a few. Bye.